moving on. Here we are. Here we are. All right, so, and action. Always when I say action, I look at you. So I pass the ball to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> This is going to be our second wet strength video. And we've had a little bit, uh, sorry, wet strength tissue video. And we've had a little bit more time to play with it and really discover some fun ways to work with it. Elizabeth is going to give hers a bath. I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to do something a little bit different. Totally different. Yeah, you're right. Totally different. But in both cases, you're going to see why the fact that this stuff is wet strength is important. She's going to get hers soaking wet, pick it up out of the bath and move it around. I'm going to scrunch the heck out of mine. And that stuff takes a look and it keeps on ticking. I had to go there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's the Timex. That's the old Timex tagline. We're probably going to get sued for copyright and probably infringement. we're going to get a cease and desist letter. There you go. Yeah. Thanks. Good job. Thanks, Timex. <laughs> we, we said your name twice. <laughs> so one of the things that I think is important when we create is to is texture. Now, most often than not, it's visual texture. We do that with stamps and layers, but there are times when you can use this stuff to create visual texture, and that's real, excuse me, actual texture, which is where tactile I'm going. Tactile texture. Very tactile, oh. yes, we can touch it and go, oh, it's so wonderful. Um, so <laughs> I played around with Distress Oxide Sprays and Mica Stains and some of the extreme sheen paint and you'll notice yes it's sparkly because there's glitter in there i couldn't help myself and uh, as we go along in my part of the video you're going to see me talk about how you can let's do it this way how you can place this on a piece of sticky stuff that i mounted to this journal page and the one thing that you'll notice and i will say this is that sticky stuff is one and done so the way to remedy where you might have missed is to tear a piece off, get myself ready here, and then just go ahead and slap it on. And you just trim it and you're good to go. So you don't, if you want a page that's got a little bit of white spot, you can, but bear in mind that that's sticky stuff, so it's gonna be a little bit tacky. But those little boo-boos where the ends are not completely covered are super easy to fix. It's a little patch. Yes, and it, it just creates more texture. I mean, that's what I'm trying for is lots of texture. I love that, yes. that the page is so highly textured. I thought she was just gonna lay it out there flat. She actually crumpled it and then stuck it down and it's yeah. very cool. And then you're gonna bring in something we haven't seen in a while, which is your repeating foam stamps and yeah. your Van Gogh stamps. So my repeating foam stamps are, uh, it's just one square stamp that you can stamp over a large surface with and you get the same pattern across everything. So I'm gonna start with this and then I'm gonna end up with something like this. So that's a lot of fun with the water bath. And I'm using also on one of the sheets, well, on this one, I use the, one of my Van Gogh foam stamps. Uh, but I use a couple of the repeating foam stamps. And I love them for covering the whole page like that. So um, we'll show you how to do that as well. Super easy. And again, the wet strength really does stand up to this. It's marvelous. It's such a revelation to me to be able to play with this and to be physical with the paper. And it just does its thing. Yes, you're like a bully with the paper. You're like a little bully. Shall we go do our thing? Yes. All right, let's go see? beat on the paper. Bossy, bossy. Let's, let's go. go. <laughs> so my experimentation with wet strength tissue involved stamping some patterns on the front and then very quickly coloring the entire sheet of paper using a bath of paint water. So the first uh, sample that I did while we were preparing has uh, stamps on it with my Van Gogh Starry Night, uh, Starry Twinkling Stars, something Spiral or other. Spiral or other. It's a Van Gogh stamp. We know that for certain. Yeah, it's a Van Gogh stamp. So I stamped all over the surface of this, let it dry, dipped it in the bath, and then added some purple. I'm going to show you how to do that. And this one is uh, super fun. The sparkly, um, glittery paint is the 24 karat gold yeah, uh, deco art extreme sheen. So uh, today, I, this uh, it's the 24 karat gold. We know that that's the name of it, even if you don't have the bottle in your hand, it's okay. Good. Okay. So I did that, and the metallic paint acts as a resist. So even though I stamp first and then dip this entire sheet of tissue in the, the bath of paint water, my um, repeating foam stamp of these little tiny stars, they stay pure gold and they do not pick up the blue. So that is the 
uh, repeating foam stamp patterns, the little stars. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> That's what's on here. And what I like about th this for creating the sheet is that I it's a square and I can just stamp all the way straight across and get a nice continuous pattern. So the example that I'm gonna um, show you today, first of all, I stamped these two sheets. So this one I stamped with this pattern, leaves or branches or something like that. And um, I used the Extreme Sheen Copper. So how I start out, and you can see where I just went over the whole sheet with the squares. So I have a repeating pattern and it's dry now on the wet strength tissue. So the one that I'm gonna actually dip in the bath to show you is this one with lots of little tiny patterns on it. And I have stamped that with... I think that's Peridot. Okay, why do they name things in French? Yes, that's what it is. Just a monkey with your brain. This one is English, simply copper, and this one is in French. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so basically, uh, Barb bought this big aluminum foil pan, a uh, roasting pan, and I put a little water in it and added some paint to the mix. It's just acrylic paint. Um, it's actually what I used uh, here is um, something else with a very small font. It's one of the Finnebear Metallic colors, and I don't recall the name of it, but it's there's no mistaking that blue. Yeah, it's a Metallic blue. And um, I know that someone is going to ask me in the comments how much water and how much paint. I don't know. It was a little bit of this, a little bit of that, kind of like cooking. You need enough water in the bottom of the pan to cover your whole sheet and enough paint to make it the color that you want it to be. I mean, yeah. Really, it's variable. And don't go light-handed on the paint because then it'll just be a pale, pale color. So a little bit of water, just enough to get the sheet wet and a decent amount of paint. And of course you can put saran wrap over the top of this and come back and use it again the next day. And then Barb had an amazing suggestion. You can take your blue, do all your blue sheets. Then you could add another color to this, such as red and make the bath purple and then do a bunch of purple sheets. So you could blend and add to this color and make it two or three different colors before you exhaust it um, of all the sheets dipped in it. So that was a pretty good idea. Well, thank you. You're welcome. So we're just gonna submerge the wet strength tissue into the paint water and make sure everything is covered. And this is where the wet strength really shines. And I don't know, there's a pun in there someplace, but the whole point is you can manhandle this and it's not going to disintegrate because it is, in fact, meant to get wet and be sturdy. Absolutely, yeah. I'm flipping it over. I'm making sure it's really um, covered. And then, like I said, you can save this water, change it to a different color. But I would do, when I'm making collage paper, I will make several sheets of this blue with different stamps on the front. And then I will take it another level and probably maybe gel print over it or splatter on it or any number of different things. But this is my starting place and I would make several sheets of blue before I switch the bath water. So now I'm going to put that over here and we are working on our nonstick craft mat, which means we can leave this to dry right here because it won't stick. This is a nonstick surface. You don't want to try to let this dry on a piece of uh, paper because it will stick and it won't peel off. So if you don't have this table surface, use a plastic bag or a large sheet of pallet paper. Okay, so now I'm gonna crunch this up on the surface and I'm gonna brayer some color over the top of it. So I've got my six inch Speedball Deluxe Brayer and a little bit of heavy body Amsterdam, some version of yellow. It's probably canary yellow, right Barb? Sounds good to me. And a little bit of water. And my thought with this is that it, may, it would make part of this green to go with the green stamping. So I'm just gonna brayer lightly, so I'm not covering all of the blue, just part of it. And you can see that as I add that yellow, it's making green. And now I'll just kinda, let's re-wrinkle it. Well, and the cool part is, is that as this dries, the water is going to accumulate in the bottom of those areas where the creases are, and you're gonna get different colors. It's gonna be very visible. Yeah, so, and in that, uh, in that, Example, I'm going to come back now and put my fingers, because I love getting my fingers dirty, in the bath, and I'm going to just drip some of this 
blue from the bath right onto the paper. And that heavy paint is gonna settle in those wrinkly areas and gonna give us kind of a, I don't know, an interesting, unique pattern when it dries. Example so when you that. pull it apart, you get this, this is flat, this is me pulling it straight. Yeah. So mean, it's it not wrinkled, like it's but it looks like it's textured and wrinkled. So um, those are the high points uh, where it got lighter, I think, uh, cause the paint kind of rolled off of it. But um, what I like about this is that the, the, the process of dipping it into the bath water, um, it, it kind of just makes it quicker for me. So when I want to make a bunch of blue sheets, instead of spraying it and brushing it and going through that, I'm just dipping it and putting it on the desktop and I can dip and do several sheets at once. So we'll just let this dry. And then when it dries, we'll just peel it off the nonstick surface and we'll have an amazing sheet of collage paper. I'm working with what I think are really the benefits of the wet strength tissue. I'm gonna scrunch the bejesus out of this stuff and I'm gonna do it when it's wet, which means I'm not gonna get that fracturing and tearing like I would if I were using the same kind of tissue paper that you might stick in a package if you were giving someone a gift. So we've cut these down because, you know, the sheets are 24 by 30, I think it is, and they're awkward to use in that size. Again, we're working on the nonstick craft sheet, so cleanup is easy, and if I wanna put this to one side and let them dry, I can do that. Here are a couple of examples, and you'll notice that, yes, indeed, there are sparkly things on here because, well, why not? And I've used stickles, I've used some metallic paint along with the mica stains and the oxide sprays. This one was more paint and a little bit of purple that was left over, which is how I got that fun pink. And then this one, I went a little bit moody. I'm using some black and some purple, and there is some sparkly stuff on there too. So I'm gonna start with, well, if I had a sheet of this, I would start with it. We were prepared for everything, but for me to actually have a sheet of this stuff, I hate when that happens. Okay, so I have, let's see what I've got here. I've got three colors of oxide sprays. I have peacock feathers, this is seedless preserves, and I have worn lipstick. And off to the side, I have distress mica stains in burning ember and fortune teller. And then I have some stickles that are hibiscus. Any of these, any any combination of kind of pale coral, purple, and turquoise that you want to come up with will kind of give you where I'm going. So what I'm going to do, shake, 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 and I'm going to put some of these colors down. And I'm not going to worry about them blending because mostly we're going to be okay as long as I don't... The, this um, worn lipstick is close enough to pink that it's really not going to be an issue. And I'm probably actually going to need another piece of tissue because this is a fair amount of spray. So... Yeah, there we go. Stuff's falling everywhere. <laughs> okay. Now, oops, a little bit of water, and let's put some mica stains in here. You know what? Let's not. Let's do the oxide sprays first. And here's what I really like about this. I can scrunch this, and however the color falls is how the color falls. So it's kind of blended in a couple of different ways on here. And there's actually, I could put some more color out. I didn't think I would need to. So let's put that there. Let's come back with a little bit more of the warm lipstick and let's make this one a little bit more turquoise. So that's peacock feathers. And then this time I am gonna put the mica stains out just to be different because well, why not? You don't wanna do the same thing every single time. I mean, sometimes it's fun if you have a particular look that you're trying to reproduce but you don't always have to. So this time, again, I'm gonna scrunch this up. And this one still ended up a lot more purple than I expected it to, that's okay. As I like to say, I'm always gonna be a 12 year old girl who likes purple. Talk amongst yourselves. That's right. Hold please. <laughs> Hold mm. please. Okay, so let's just wipe this up. And what I'm gonna do now is put so this is the extreme sheen metal leak this color is named aquamarine Ooh. Mm -hmm. yeah right and what i'm gonna do is just brayer some of this out and how this brayers out is doesn't make any difference and if i wanted to i could brayer some of this directly on my piece but i'm not going to because i want to show you what happens so i'm going to put this down and i'm going to scrunch and like what Elizabeth did, where she ends up with high spots and low spots where there's color and there's not, 
that's what I have going on here. Now, ordinarily, I would probably want a little bit more color in here, and there's nothing that says I couldn't come back and do that, but you can see how the scrunches where the area was high is where I'm getting that turquoise. So if I roll some more of this out, or I put some more of it out, let's go a little bit heavier this time, see what happens. I like this because I can get in there with my hands and really play around. Again, I'm gonna put this kind of face down and I'm gonna scrunch it. As you play like this, one of the things that you're going to realize is that, where do you stop? And the answer is, well, wherever you feel like you wanna stop, it doesn't, oh, see there you can really see how we've got the color on the top. And when I open this up, there's nothing there. So then the next fun thing we could do would be to come back with some more of, whoa, come back with some more of the mica stain. I hope that didn't get on you. Nah, I'm fine. All right. And I'm gonna scrunch again. And you can mix and mix and mix until you end up with something that you're satisfied with. So this became more purple. There's nothing really going on in the center, so let's pick some of that up. And when this is all said and done, I have all that patterning that becomes effortless. I really want to convey to you how strong this tissue is, how you can scrunch it up, and how it's very forgiving, and you can continue to work with it if you want. So we've got some stuff left here. Let's come back. I've got to pick this up anyway to show you the next step, so I might as well just pick it up. All right, so now I've got, again, more color going on here, which is really, really fun. So except for the paint, all of the media that I have used right now is rewettable. And what that means is if you want to adhere it to a surface, you might be saying to yourself, well, what happens when you want to glue this down? And the answer is, well, it kind of depends. If you use gel medium, then you absolutely are going to stir up some of that color as you brush it and you lay it down and then you brush it over the top. Or you can do what I did. I know it's here somewhere which is to use, well, what I did here, and I'm gonna show you in one second, is to use sticky stuff. So that's how this is done. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put the stickles on there. We'll come back to that in a second. So someplace here is another page. Okay, this is a page, you can see it's shiny. That's the release paper from the sticky stuff. I put this on here and all I have to do is grab this piece. So I really like this piece. Oops, wrong side. And what I wanna do is make certain that I don't lose this green that's here. So what I'm going to do is keep that in mind as I go ahead and I apply this. And now, of course, I'm all thumbs trying to get the release paper to peel off. There we go. So I was really careful to get the release paper right into the crease where the signature is folded in half. I'm gonna turn this this way. And I'm going to lay this down and I'm deliberately going to scrunch it because that's the look I want. Now remember, sticky stuff is pretty much one and done, so you kind of have to get it where it needs to be or forever hold your peace. <laughs> and done. So this is the edge of the page, kind of this is the center of that signature, and you can see that this is what I've got. I could come back and I could, for example, one thing I was going to do and that I haven't had a chance yet, Elizabeth brought her folk art floral stamps and I was going to stamp a section of those and make a flower that I was gonna put on here. So what I didn't do was get that prepped ahead of time. But all I have to do is come in here and I'll use probably a utility knife to trim along here so that I get rid of this excess color, uh, this excess paper. And then I have a page that's ready to go. Lots of physical texture because you can feel it under your fingers. Lots and lots of visual texture because you can see all of that color movement and, you know, the movement that happens with the stickles. Speaking of which, if I come back to this, normally I do this when the paper is dry, but let's see what happens when it's not. So I've got that hibiscus stickles, and I'm going to... Normally I would do this, as I said, dry, and I would spread it with a palette knife, but let's just do this and see what happens. This is how you get randomness, lots of randomness. So this is probably not gonna be as super reflective as it could be, but- I see it. Oh yeah, I can see yeah, it Yeah, when too. you angle it to the light. So that, if you could use Stickles glitter gel, I mean, I 
always like to put sparkly stuff in my work. So for me, it's either the glitter gel or it's a metallic paint or it's the regular old stickles. But you can keep adding to this until you have really messy hands <laughs> and mm -hmm. you're satisfied with what you've got done. So there you go. So that's it, wet strength tissue paper. And um, this is our, are you ready for it? This is my favorite word, our penultimate video. Is it? Of this session. Yes, it's my favorite word. It means second to last. And uh, we only have one more video that we're making. So this is the penultimate video yes, from is. this Sacramento visit for you. February, 2024. We have worked really hard. We hope that you're gonna enjoy this one and all the other ones that will be coming. Two twenty twenty four. That's a lot of twos and fours, even numbers. There must be a lotto number in there someplace. Maybe we should play those numbers. Maybe, Maybe we we'll should. win and we'll never have to make another video again. I think the chances of that are probably about that big. Slim to none. Yeah, probably. So, in anyway, other words, we'll yeah, see you next we'll week. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>